Hi, and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the structure of the kidneys. This includes the overall structure of the kidneys plus the structure of the nephron. OK, in the last few videos, we've looked at the roles of the liver in excretion. One of the key roles of the liver is in the production of nitrogenous waste products, and this includes the molecule urea, which I'm showing you here. Remember that urea is produced when the liver metabolizes excess amino acids. The urea produced by the liver passes into the bloodstream. Now, when the blood passes through the kidneys, the urea is filtered out of the blood and excreted via urine. So, one of the key roles of the kidneys is to remove waste molecules such as urea from the blood. The kidneys also play a major role in adjusting the concentration of water in the blood, and scientists call this osmoregulation. Now, we're going to be looking at these functions of the kidneys in detail in later videos. In this video, we're exploring the structure of the kidneys. This includes both the overall structure and the structure of the nephron, which is the functional part of the kidneys. Now, this is essential knowledge, which you'll need when we look at the functions of the kidneys in later videos. Humans have two kidneys, and we find the kidneys in the abdomen. Blood enters each kidney via the renal artery, which is connected to the aorta. Once the blood passes through the kidney, it leaves via the renal vein, and the renal vein is connected to the vena cava. As the blood passes through the kidneys, urea is filtered out of the blood, and the urea is transferred to urine. The urine leaves each kidney via a tube called the ureter. The ureter carries the urine to the bladder where the urine is stored before being released from the body. And finally, the urine is released via a tube called the urethra. Now, each kidney contains around 1.5 million microscopic structures called nephrons. And I'm showing you the structure of a single nephron here. We're going to be looking in detail at the functions of the nephron in the next few videos. Blood passes into the nephron via the afferent arteriole, which has branched from the renal artery. This then splits into a dense network of capillaries, which scientists call the glomerulus. The glomerulus is surrounded by a structure called the Bowman's capsule, which is shaped like a cup. When the blood passes through the glomerulus, small molecules are filtered out of the blood, and these molecules pass into the Bowman's capsule. Scientists call this process ultrafiltration. The blood then makes its way out of the glomerulus via the efferent arteriole. Now, the chemicals filtered out of the blood include waste molecules such as urea. However, some useful molecules such as glucose are also filtered out of the blood. The fluid that has left the blood now makes its way down a long tubule. Notice that the tubule has an extensive network of capillaries. These capillaries contain the blood which has just left the glomerulus via the efferent arteriole. Now, the tubule has several different sections. The first part of the tubule is called the proximal convoluted tubule. The word proximal means close to, and you'll notice that the proximal convoluted tubule is close to the Bowman's capsule. The word convoluted means winding. In the proximal convoluted tubule, Useful molecules such as glucose are reabsorbed back into the blood as it passes through the capillaries. Scientists call this process reabsorption or selective reabsorption. So, as we've seen, the first part of the nephron involves two processes. Firstly, molecules are filtered out of the blood when it passes through the glomerulus. Secondly, useful molecules are then reabsorbed back into the blood at the proximal convoluted tubule. Now, the remaining parts of the nephron are called the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, and the collecting duct. These regions are involved in regulating the concentration of water in the blood, and scientists call this osmoregulation. The loop of Henle produces a high concentration of solutes, such as the sodium ion, in this region of the kidney. In the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct, water is reabsorbed by osmosis from the fluid in the tubule back into the blood. The level of water that's reabsorbed depends on the water potential of the blood, and we'll be looking at osmoregulation in detail in later videos. OK, I'm showing you here a cross section through a kidney. Now, the kidney contains three distinct regions. The outer region is called the cortex. 
We then have a lighter internal region called the medulla. And finally, we have a central region called the pelvis. Now, if we go back to the nephron, we can see that ultrafiltration takes place in the cortex. The medulla contains the loops of Henle and the collecting ducts. And finally, the urine passes through the pelvis on its way to the ureter. In the next video, we look at the process of ultrafiltration.